They won't stop. Do they even care that? They're just running into death. Okay, everything's cool. Everything's fine. We got everything's under control. Okay, last time, what, what, what did we do? What, what, what's next? What is, okay, we got, what is what do we got to do next? Okay, well, last last time, uh, la, 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 last time we finished the IKs and set up everything that we needed needed to do. So that now we can go over the tools and blender to make sure that we can go over the animations and make animations. So then we can, okay, so we can get out of this mess. Right, uh, Kristoff, right? Kristoff, that's your name. Good. Prepare the logic, my good friend. And now we'll get to work on what we need. Making an animation using the tools of Blender. And then afterwards, we will export the animation. And in such a manner that we will ensure that we will never lose our data. Yes, I have run into that problem many times before. And with that being said, we can export our little project into Yuli. And if we so desire, our very world itself. And we will be doing that. There's no question about that. Ah! Huh. Well, with that, I think our little intro's gone on quite long enough. I think it's time to be. I, I think it's. I think it's time we get started. All right. Well, for our example today, we will be going over a simple walking animation. Well, maybe not so simple when you get down to it. Either way, uh, we should know that it's normally a good idea to have a reference image or video when doing this sort of thing, but I today will not be doing that because, well, I have been walking for many years and have watched people walk for many years and I dub myself quite an expert on how the human body moves when you walk. Be that as it may, I do think that uh, you are, you should feel free to do whatever you desire. So first, we need to go to the Animation tab. If you look up here, you will see a lot of tabs. The one we want is right here, the Animation tab. Click on that and you will open up the Animation window. More than likely, your window will look quite similar to mine. You will have the Editor right here, and right here you will have the Navigation Controls. And this could also be used for moving back and forth against the timeline, and the editor window right here can be used for scrubbing forward and backwards through time to observe your animations in motion. However, we will not be using this one today, my friends. Oh no. We will be using the action editor, which is, in my opinion, the superior version. Now, what exactly is an action editor, you might ask? Well, I'm so glad you asked. For you see that... Uh <clears throat> oh no 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 wait this 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 won't take long this won't take long I promise you look that thing won't set a single step into this inner sanctum let alone lay a single claw on you you have my absolute guarantee on that yes with all of my soul, yes. Now, 
action editor. In game design, you generally like to make your animations in chunks. Uh, you could go ahead and do it in a timeline in all one go, but it, you generally have to chop it up later, and it, it's better to just go ahead and make individual actions now while you can. And then you can rearrange them however you want, via scripts or cutscenes or however you need them in your game. Okay, so now we are ready to start making animations. To do this, you will notice that there's a button here in the middle of our action editor. It should say new, but however, if it does not, that probably means that you have some animations ready to go. To see what that looks like, go ahead and hit the new button, and it will look like this. And from here, if you want to make a new animation, just go ahead and hit the copy button over here, rename it, and voila, you have yourself the template for a brand new animation. Regardless, you should now see a total of four new buttons. The ones we care about will be the last three, uh, starting with the fake user button, which I have found to be exponentially important. In fact, I would say that if it's not ticked, go ahead and tick it now. Why? Because I have literally lost hours of animation work in the past. Why? I don't know why. I hate that I don't know why, but all I know is that if I tick this button, I will not lose anything. All I know is that by hitting this button, I will never lose any animations due to Blender or personal stupidity. Why, Blender? Why would you do this to me? Why would you vex me so? I've been using you for literally years! Why do you hate me?! So yeah, just go ahead and take that box, why don't you? Well, the next button now is the new action button, which not only does what his name suggests, but also copies your existing animation over so you can edit a different variant if you want. <clears throat> to change the name, just go ahead and double click on the name up here and rename it to whatever you want. Oh yeah, and uh, hit the shield button, please. <clears throat> And lastly, we have the unclick box, which closes your animation and might, for all I know, be the reason why I lose my animations so often without hitting the shield button. Oh, by the way, hit the shield button. Is it still there even though I don't hit the shield button? Oh, it looks like it's still there, but I'm still gonna hit this button regardless. Oh, and lastly, we have this little drop dead menu over here, which lets us, you know, switch between animations whenever, you know, we're working in between animations. So, there you go. A little, little note for you there. Alrighty then, before we start, we'll make sure that you're in pose mode, which of course can be found right here. Yes, pose mode, perfect. Following the first steps, I'll go ahead and duplicate my default pose, and I'll rename it to walk, or you can just rename it to whatever suits your needs. We will basically be working in like a three-step fashion. First, we'll be making our key poses. This is the defining poses that will lead everything from each particular pose to the next. And then at some point, we'll change the interpolation. That way, everything animates more like stop motion. And this is primarily for convenience, and oh my goodness, it is so helpful. Then lastly, we'll make our in-between poses and set everything back up so everything transitions from pose to pose nice and smoothly once again. Oh, and be sure to hit that record button just about right here. That way you actually record uh, the actions that you, you know, want to animate. Now for this first bit, I'll be setting up the first step in my walk cycle animation. But the looks of things, it looks like my keylogger program was unfortunately shut off, but no matter. When moving bones around, I'm hitting G, and when I'm only rotating them, I'm hitting R. Also, I'm keeping the auto IK on to assist me during posing my model. If you keep it off, you'll only really be able to rotate your bones. However, it does make it actually rather easy to change the overall height of your model, say moving it up or down. Clearly, I forgot about this several times during the animation process. <clears throat> when making your walk animations, it's always good to start either mid-step or right as your step hits the ground. Don't worry too much about switching from one animation to the next. Uh, usually, engines like Unity will handle that smooth transition by default. When setting up your animations, it's a good tip to start working from the key poses first. These are the main poses in which makes up your total animation. The same formula is actually followed whenever you're doing 2D animations as well. It helps us keep track of everything and plan ahead our motions ahead of time. Also, be sure to keep in mind your body weight between animation poses as well. Doing so will not only ensure that your animations look either, you know, natural, or at the very least, they will look correct. Now, after the first pose, I'll go ahead and make this second one. In this pose, both feet are firmly on the ground, and his weight has been shifted. I know his poses are a bit exaggerated and a bit dynamic, but, well, you know, seeing as how we're under quite a lot of stress and a little bit of a time constraint, I'm afraid that's a little bit unavoidable. And unfortunately, with a little bit of a lack of time, uh, mistakes and errors uh, may occur. Uh, I, I mean, um, 
Mm. It's, it's, it's clearly just for artistic flair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with our current situation at all. No, no. It's just the perfect expression of this thing's personal personality. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's all according. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. well, well, the next thing we're gonna do is work on these things look a bit more snappy, so to speak. I sometimes find it easier to work in more of a stop motion style. It makes things extremely easy just to focus on all the key poses as you're going throughout the animation. And I find this really helps me to make my animations overall look real nice. So to set that up, let's go to our scene view and hit A to select all the bones. Next, let's move our cursor down into the action editor timeline and right click inside of it. You now see some options pop up, scroll down to the interpolation mode, and then we'll select this one, the constant option. This sets up everything so our animations will just snap from key pose to key pose. See for the results for yourself, it's perfect. A quick note, since my key recorder is uh, currently off, I'll go ahead and give you this information right now. Sometimes you may find it prudent to move all your keyframes around. You can do this by selecting all the bones in your scene by hitting A, and then go down to the action editor and hit the topmost keyframe right here to grab all the ones in that column. Then hit G to move them around. You could also, if you want, hit A and grab every single keyframe and move them around as well. Or you can just select a single bone and then move all the keyframes associated with that bone. Now that we got that out of the way, back to the animation. From here on on, I'll focus on making all the important key poses in the walk animation. Now pay close attention to how the scythe fiend's body's weight kind of shifts around with each step. Note also that whenever you walk around, the rest of your body moves as well. Since he's a shambling character, I try to imagine exactly how the rest of his body would react to him moving about like that, and then, well, animate it. And while animating, it's good to kind of go back and forth between your animations to see where you're going and where you're at and how to make individual tweaks to make it look nice. And you'll notice that during my animation, I'm making a lot of tweaks. Uh, sometimes I'll go back in time and change something, and sometimes I'll just, you know, just move on and, you know, do what I can. Uh, this total animation process, I believe this animation took around uh, 45 minutes, give or take, and a lot of it was little detail works. It's a very time-consuming process, but very rewarding in the end. And you'll find yourself going back multiple times and t switching things around. Sometimes you may even delete something, move something. Uh, but either way, you know, eventually you will get it done. And of course, we need to be mindful of where your weight lands with each and every pose, shifting the center of gravity as needed. And if you find some of your limbs are still sliding whenever you animate them, well, just go ahead and select all your bones again and switch everything back to constant. That just means that, well, you probably just missed a few bones. That's fine. Regardless, once you are done, you then would probably want to set everything back to smooth transition, if that's what, you, of course, you want to do. From that way, you just, once again, simply select all the bones, go back down to the action editor, and right-click, and then in the interpolation tab, we'll just select this, um, bizarre? 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 Whatever the hell this is called. And that will set everything back to normal. to worry. We're almost done here. What comes next is so simple it barely needs any attention at all, but uh, we have some extra time, so we might as well get it done. Oh, please, like that thing has the strength left to knock down a solid wooden door. Uh, uh, not to worry too much. Well, uh, we'll get the scythe fiend up in no time. Uh, and I, I just remembered, actually. I made something a while back. Let's see. Uh, no, no. Ah, here it is. A fine piece of craftsmanship, if I do say so myself. I may not have enough focus to cast anything, but surely I can channel enough concentration to use this. Revazo aside, I'll just go ahead and tuck this away, thank you. Now that we have all the main points of the animation all set up and ready to go, let's go ahead and work on the in-betweens a bit. So let's go. 
All right, and finally, I'm just adding all the in-between frames of my animation to give it just a little bit of extra flair and expression. It would be really handy if I knew if there was a, like a an onion layer viewer like in any 2D program, but since I don't know where that is, I just scrub in between the two poses and then craft the in-between pose. Then after a while, if you left your animation in a constant state, it would look a lot like stop motion animation, which that being said, it would be rather interesting to see that in game. Regardless, let's fill in all the empty spaces and let's make this animation look real nice. And to do that, of course, we're gonna go back a ways and sometimes make little changes, like the little top of the head there. Yes, uh, it's made of cloth, so clearly that will be a bit bounced. But then again, but of course, sometimes I do it a little too much and I have to go back and change it a bit. And we move the legs around to, you know, cause the weight shifts and you know, he's a bit wobbly. So, you know, that's just how he moves and you know. Okay, all's done. Now that everything is finished, I'd like to go back to my default pose and, and turn off the recording button down below. Then we go over to the file tab and move down to the export options and let's find ourselves uh, the FBX one. Yes, we'll be exporting as an FBX file. Click on that and we'll have ourselves a few options to decide. If you have anything in your scenes that you don't want to be exported, go ahead and delete them, or just select the things that you do want to be exported and hit the export selected button. After that, just select the file in which you are going to export your model. And for us, that is going to be the Soul Stone. <clears throat> And there you have it, folks. Those are the tools in which we use to create animations here in Blender. Save your Blender files, uh, make edits, re-export them how much you need. Animation itself is a rather massive subject and cannot be covered in one video alone. But regardless, I hope this helps you on your animation journey. And I hope that I provided a way for you to make your animations and, of course, to make them look real nice. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, everything's done here. Uh, hurry, let, let's go ahead and, and breathe life into this. <laughs>